God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, those are nice rip-roaring words for a lovely Sunday morning. And obviously there are a lot of things that could be said about that gospel, in fact, about all the readings that we had. The best I can say is we might want to go home and reread them and really think about them. There's a lot there. Two summers ago, Andy and I were coming home from Syracuse with two of our grandchildren, Casey and Jeffrey, when this rip-roaring thunderstorm burst onto the scene. And it was a fierce one. It had crazy lightning zigzagging and punctuating the early evening sky. There were big blasts of thunder and these big globs of raindrops dive bombing our car. Well, Casey, little Casey, named her fear head on. She said, I'm scared, Mama and Papa, and I'm back here praying. But Jeffrey kept up about a two-mile litany of, well, I'm not scared. What's there to be afraid of? Well, we went a few more miles of tortuous thunderstorm activity, and Andy finally stopped at Cortland, <clears throat> pulled into a parking lot to, for us to wait out the storm. And right about that moment, this big, massive bolt of lightning kind of aligned itself with an ear-splitting explosion of thunder, and that was coupled with all kinds of cr crippling wind gusts that violently shook our car with the four of us in it. And then to really make things interesting, all the lights in the parking lot went out, leaving us, the four of us, in heavy, billowing darkness. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that two screams came from the back seat, and Jeffrey yelled, Something like, okay, I'm going to say it. Now I'm scared. <laughs> and he was. He was really frightened. I was too. I think Andy was also. <laughs> and it's a reminder that every single one of us have things that we are really frightened by at times. That all of us are utterly vulnerable to fear, to its insidious clutches. Whether we're children or whether we're adults, whether those reasons that we have for being afraid are valid, we get frightened at times. And those fears can be big, they can be little, they can be real, they can be imagined. We know, I don't need to make a list of fears here for any of us, we know that fear is an underlying factor that drives much of human behavior in everyone. Fear holds tremendous and complicated power over our lives. And we become consumed by fear. And when that happens and we become really scared, all kinds of things can happen. Our judgment can become distorted. I know that I become frozen by doubt and confusion. And I find myself, and maybe you do too, unable to make even a simple decision. Well, fear is one of those many things that we heard Jesus addressing with his disciples in that very strange gospel reading from Matthew. He hit it head on with those men. I mean, these are his front line disciples. He is really talking tough to them. He's saying, fear is a serious human condition. And if we read all of chapter 10 and more, we know that he is telling them what they can expect as he's being, as he is instructing them to go out and preach and teach and heal people. He hits them with heavy words about fear. And he says, you need to have faith in God's care for you. You need to put that first if you're going to do the work and the ministry ahead of you. I don't think that Jesus is denying fear within us. He is not denying its reality and its rawness. But I hear Jesus being very crystal clear in saying, I'm sending you out to serve others. I'm sending you out to take care of people who suffer deep, oppressive needs. 
You can't be out there wimping around. You need to operate with confidence and strength rather than fear. You need to have faith. He goes on, we hear him even naming some of their fears, and you and I can relate to those fears. And within those fears, the list could be really long. He says, I know that you're worried about your self-preservation. I know that you're worried about being persecuted. I know that you have a lot of anxiety over your personal needs. But you cannot let those things get in the way of your discipleship. He is adamant. Jesus is adamant. He's almost hostile sounding, certainly harsh, in his warnings that however real or raw, none of these fears should ever outweigh the responsibility that these men and us have in spreading God's word and in doing very necessary ministry. So if we, like Jeffrey, say, and we do it in our own way, well, I'm going to say it, God, I'm scared. The answer back would be something like, but I still need you to get yourself out to do this important Christian mission and ministry. And you do it. We all do it. Some of you are going out to canteen today. We all do a number of ministries. Some of them are a little easier than others. But Jesus is saying much of the ministry will not be easy. And he's saying you need to act in faith. You need to be strong. You need to be tough. And of course he's also saying this is the way you need to lead your lives. Everything in your life should be done in discipleship. But we are always bolstered by God's encouragement and God's constant power and care. Jesus repeats, tells us repeatedly that following him will never be easy. Radical discipleship is not easy, but we give our fears to God. And when we do that, we allow God's Holy Spirit to act in us, to heal us, to pump us up, to be strong for other people, so that when we allow others to receive what we have been given by God, we are making sure that they are receiving healing from Christ himself. And when we, any of us receive Christ, we are receiving God, who sent him and who sends us. So we're called to be tough. A few weeks ago, we celebrated Pentecost, and a truth that has been carried through human beings since that first Pentecost is that God's power and presence and Holy Spirit lives in us. We were given that by baptism, and it's that very same power that came rushing in, like that storm that we had, but it's that very same power that kindled the hearts of those persons gathered long ago that lives in us. We heard Paul in his letter this morning say, we are resurrection people. We need never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit active in our lives because we are never separated from God, even when it feels like it, that God is breathing gusts of grace and power and love into us all the time. And we can be tough. A morning prayer in a Franciscan prayer book reads this. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. As we rejoice in this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire for love of you now and forever. I think all of those are beautiful words, but I was really struck by the words, the day lies open before us. Today lies open before us. Tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. We don't want to close up our days by a whole lot of things, including fear. Even we, in our crazy lives. So may we stop doing that. May we open up and act more in faith. As Christians, we know that every aspect of our lives has been designed by God. It's been designed to be drawn into a living, 
breathing discipleship of faithful Christians who gather each week with Christ to get ourselves ready for the work in the world and then we remember that there is something that is always set before us to deal with any kind of fear within us and that something is God we're always pointed to God it is a knowledge of God's love it is a knowledge of God's confidence to live even among anything that might scare us, any violence, any uncertainties, anything that frightens us, anything unknown about the future. Because it all lies in the loving hands and grace of God. We cannot be weak in our lives. We cannot be weak in our prayers. We cannot be weak in our service, in our faith, in the rights of the church, in our mission. We are baptized Christians. You are all, we are all bold servants to the world that God loves so dearly. Our Christian life is a resurrection life, and it's accomplished through us by God's beloved Holy Spirit. So today and every day, may each one of us be empowered by that truth, not weakened by fear, and out there doing marvelous things. Amen.